Welcome, this is Ed Logan, and this is Fruit For Your Life. We're going to talk about five concerns that people have when it comes to being a fruitarian and taking on this lifestyle, so stay tuned. All right, we're going to talk about five concerns that people have about living as a fruitarian. Now, let me be the first to say, there are few people who actually totally only eat fruit, and that's all that they eat, okay? There's not a lot of people who do that. There's a lot of fruitarians who do eat um, salads and they will eat other raw food. And there's also some who will actually have a little bit of cooked food. So let's just, let's clear that up, okay? Um, there's not a lot of people who only eat fruit. And if they do, hey, if you can do that, that's awesome. Um, I think it'd be a, a great lifestyle to be able to do 100 percent all fruit but it is a valid concern for people people are very curious about can you get the proper nutrition from eating and um, with this lifestyle so let me talk to you about this um, and I did take some notes because I want to make sure that you all get the proper information see a lot of times um, when people have questions about being a fruitarian it, they're asking because they just don't know and so it takes people like, for those of you who are already doing, it takes people like you, it takes people like me to be able to help clear up some of the questions that people have because, you know, sometimes people put that way of life down, eating raw, anything, vegetables, pro, all of that. You know, people somewhat have some misconceptions about that. But the people who can really take the charge and do it is the people who has done it. The people who were sickly and ill and low energy, you know, those people like that. No, that's not who you ask. You ask those who have changed, who have got so much energy now. Hey, where are you getting that energy from? So those are the people that you really you want to talk to and you want to ask them the question. So let's get into the first one, um, the nutrition concerns. OK. If you've been around fruitarians long enough or people who talk about eating raw, you will hear them say things like this. And I say this all the time. When you look at a thousand pound ox in the field and that ox is continually, he has his head down eating grass. Where is he getting that weight from? Before man started domesticating animals, they ate on their own. They didn't need for us to bring them their food to eat. They didn't need for us to bring them uh, a mix of some uh, silage and stuff like that to eat. They were already eating on their own before man domesticated the animal. Think about the horses. What did they eat? They ate what was off of the ground. They ate the grass. It's always been there to feed them. In those things, there is fat, there is protein, there is carbohydrates for them. That's what the body needs. Okay, so look at those big animals who are full of muscle, brawn strength. Where are they getting that strength from? Got another one for you. Have you ever seen a gorilla at a zoo or a monkey, a chimpanzee, orangutan? All of those um, animals, think about it. What do they eat? They're always eating fruit and vegetables. If Matter of fact, if you put fruit and vegetables in front of a gorilla, the gorilla will eat the fruit first and then go to the vegetables. So these things have always been around, always feeding a 700 pound gorilla, 500 pound gorilla. Look. Where is it getting its nutrition from? It's getting its nutrition from the fruit. It's getting the nutrition from the raw produce that it is given also. Okay, think about this. What was the first foods created? If, if you're a Bible person, if you believe in the scripture, what was the first food given to Adam and Hawa or, or Adam and Eve? What was the first fruit? It was the plants from the ground. As a matter of fact, when you think about it, he says you can eat from all of these trees in the garden. 
but only this one you can't eat from. So what were they eating from the trees? What comes from trees? Fruit. Don't you think the creator knows what to put into that fruit to feed his people? Of course he does. So if the first foods that was created was raw, healthy produce and fruits, why wouldn't it be good for us today? Does it make any sense for us to question what has been around for thousands of years, but today all of a sudden it's an issue? Okay, here's another one. Sugar. That's going to give you, you're going to be taking in too much sugar and you're going to become a diabetic. And I remember hearing that. It, it's funny. T about 10 years ago, I was actually thinking about eating fruit for a week and I knew nothing about what I know now. I just knew that something had to change and somebody actually talked me out of it. You know what they told me? They said, you shouldn't eat all that fruit. You're going to get the sugars. It, it's going to give you diabetes. And, you know, I thought about it and I was like, well, that's a, it is a lot of sugar, but how can, how can something that's good for you that grows on trees. I even had the mindset then to think this, how could it be bad for you? But, you know, because so many people have diabetes today, I assumed that that was possibly correct. Okay, here's number two. Number two is long-term sustainability. Okay, can you do it long-term? And my question is, is you, have you made a plan? So if you decide to have a fruitarian type of lifestyle, you're going to have to come up with a plan on how you're going to be able to take care of things. Um, it is a concern, no doubt about it, it's a concern because you're talking about making this change for the rest of your life. So again, what is your plan? Another question, are you living in a rural area or are you living in an urban area? See, that's a big difference. And it's okay because you can plan for both of them. If you live in a rural area, um, just know if you don't have orchards and things like that around you where you can go to the farms and pick the fruit, like if you live in the South, like I can't help but say it, South Florida, if you've got orchards around like that, hey, you're set. You're set. But if you live way up north, maybe in Dakota, and you know, maybe way, way up north in the New England states, and you don't have fruit trees like that, how are you gonna get your fruit? So you have to plan on how you're gonna do it. Are you gonna get it from your grocery stores? All right, so those are the things that you have to think about. If you live in an urban setting, what if you live in an urban area, and I'm just gonna say this, and I'm not ashamed to say this because I am a person of color. What if you live in an urban area of people of color, we know for sure that those particular areas are what is called food deserts. And there are a lot of people who live in those areas who do not have automobiles to be able to travel to get to places where they could get it. The question is going to be, what are you going to do to set yourself up to win? If you live in an urban area like that, you can still do it. You can do it. You're just going to have to plan where to go get your produce from where to go get your fruit from, okay? So it's all, you're able to do it. It is a sustainable lifestyle. I've been doing it since March. And right now, uh, it is the middle, of, no, it's actually the end, towards the end of September. So I've been doing it all that time. And I live in a small town that I consider, it has a couple of grocery stores, but I still consider it to be a, a food desert because you only have a certain allotment of what you can choose from versus going to a big city. So it is doable. You just have to plan how you're going to do it. Okay, let's look at another one. How about the health risks? So people seem to think that there is a health risk when you eat fruit. And, you know, I want to bring people to this point right here. I, this is my truth, okay? So you, other people may have their uh, their own truth. Uh, this is my truth. Before I started eating this way, I was unhealthy. My life, my lifestyle of how I felt was was getting close to miserable. Always aching. Never really had the energy to do anything. So for my truth, my truth is 
I don't see any health risks. Uh, my life has totally changed. All the energy that I do have now, all the illnesses that I had that are gone now, I, I don't see any health risks. Now, let me say this also. It does not mean that you cannot get sick, okay? It does not mean that you cannot get an illness. For me, I believe it's more of you're less likely to get sick. You're less likely to get an illness. So, okay, so let's just throw that out the window. We can get sick, but when you do get sick, how, how much quicker do you recover from that sickness? All right, so it's things like that. So also health risks people wanna know about is about weight loss. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was a benefit for me doing what I'm doing. Now, maybe if you're already a naturally skinny person, that would be a health risk concern for you. But as an obese person, as I was, that was not a risk. That was a pleasure I was looking forward to. I knew I was going to lose weight. And so when I lost the weight, you know, when does anybody ever look at someone losing weight and say, are you sick? Especially when you're looking good in your health. Now, if you're sick and you've got something going on, people can see when you're sickly. But when you have full vitality, when you're losing your weight, very few people are going to ask you if you're sick. Matter of fact, most people are going to ask you, hey, hey, what are you doing? See, that's what I get. What am I doing? When they see the energy that flows from me, when they understand who I used to be and they see me now. So again, health risks are possible. You can never say that you'll never get sick. You'll never get an illness. But I, it's safe to say for me right now that uh, the illnesses that you get will probably be less severe and you'll probably recover from it a whole lot quicker. Okay, ethical and environmental considerations. Ethical and environmental considerations. I don't think there's anything wrong with having trees all over the place. I don't see anything wrong with having vast acres full of trees, orange trees, peach trees, whatever trees you can think of. And it's for the feeding of people. I don't see anything wrong with environmental issues. The trees grow, they drop their fruit and they replenish and re-nourish the ground from those fruits that drop that, um, you know, really we can't use the bruised fruits and things like that. It automatically replenishes the ground. It gives us oxygen. How can a tree grove or an orchard be detrimental to the environment? That's a consideration that my mind does not allow me to understand. And there may be some of you out there who can pick out a couple of things why it would be bad. But to feed people and to have trees that are growing naturally on the ground, I just don't see where the ethical part comes from. You know, if the Most High made plants and trees, how, what, what is the ethical problem with people planting trees? What if everybody in their neighborhood planted fruit trees in their backyards? How would that be unethical? So there's great ethics when it comes to trees. There's great ethics when it comes to eating raw food. It, it really does help the environment and it really does help the earth as well. Um, as far as the environment goes, it, having trees around, feeding people from the abundance of fruit coming from trees, I have no idea how that would be an environmental concern other than having flat, uh, beautiful, pristine land and you're planting trees on that on that area or you're setting aside large amounts of land to plant and grow food for people to eat. I believe that probably, excuse me, hunger could probably be cured if we did those types of things. 
I really do. I believe that diseases could probably be cured if we were to do that, if we were to take everybody off of the processed food and put them on the food that actually grows from the ground and actually comes from the trees, I think that's great ethical. Um, there is no ethical consequence to that because people would begin to start being healed from what they are eating. All right. All right. Number five, the last one. Thank you all for being with me for this long. I do appreciate it. I, I'm a talker and I don't mean to go so long, but you know, this is what happens. Um, social challenges. So you're definitely, once again, you're going to have to do some planning when it comes to this social challenges. You, like when you go out and hang out with your friends or you're going to go and have dinner, you're going to have to make some choices. Either number one, either you're, you're going to have to eat before you go. Number two, you're going to have to take your food with you. And number three, if there is a, a fresh whole food restaurant that you can go to, have your friends go to the restaurant that you choose. Don't go to the ones that everybody normally goes to. See if you can get them to come to where you feel comfortable eating. Maybe it will be good for them to see that kind of thing. So you're going to be dealing definitely with um, social challenges. Also, finding fruit. OK, if you go back and look at my I call them my fruit hauls, you know, basically where I'm going to search for fruit. You know, I'm going to tell you to travel. If you do not have the fruit in your area to sustain you, my suggestion would be to go out of town to get your fruit. I do it all the time. I've been to Florida. I've been to Memphis. I've been to Indianapolis. I've been all over and I live in Kentucky. OK, so I'm traveling out. I drove to Louisville. I, I go where the major cities are because I know that's where the fruit is. I've been to Cincinnati. I can keep going. I have been places to go and find my food. And that's something that you're going to have to do as well. You're going to have to research. You're going to have to find your food. It's worth it. Trust me to know that your body is healing from its diseases. To know that your energy is going to come back and you're just going to be like, like I am right now. I mean, you're, it, it's worth it. It's worth driving to do that. And I'm going to introduce something now uh, that I haven't introduced before. And just listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. If you have to go out of town and purchase a large amount of fruit because you're going to need it to sustain you, but you are concerned about that food going bad before you're able to eat that food or that fruit, um, there is a way to conserve it. Okay. And this is what I do. Not everybody's going to agree with it. That's totally okay. But this is what I do. And I do it because I have one of these. I freeze dry some of my fruit. I freeze dry some of the raw vegetables um, that I eat. And I do that because I understand the nutritional value of freeze drying. Now, it's not being dehydrated. When you dehydrate, you're destroying some of your food. You're, you're having to heat it up, basically. Freeze drying is a totally different process. Freeze drying is freezing the food and slightly warming and this thing called sublimation takes place where where it begins to suck out the moisture of the food without cooking it without heating it heating the food up it it happens and so it's basically taking the liquid out of the food so you you have 90 percent of the nutrition the only part of that food that has been taken out has been the liquid and so this is what I would tell you to do. If you find good freeze dried food, especially good free freeze dried fruit, if you're concerned about being dehydrated from eating freeze dried food, then what I would say to you is simply drink something with it. So what your body is using to rehydrate the food that you're consuming. Listen, when it hits your body, when it hits your stomach, it turns back into a whole food. It's got it's whole nutritional value. Liquid has been added back to it. So 
that's one of the things that you may want to think about doing. And I'm going to do videos on that too to help people as well. Um, in the truck with me, I have freeze dried broccoli because I know I need some greens. Um, I also have freeze dried artichoke hearts. I love artichoke hearts. So what I do is I freeze dry them. I put them in a Ziploc bag and I bring them with me and they are awesome. I throw seasoning on them, not salt, but I season them up and I have them with me. See, I'm getting extra nutrition right there in and of itself. So these are just things that you're going to have to think about. For those of you who have concerns about living a fruitarian lifestyle, okay? And again, you don't have to be 100% all fruit to be a fruitarian, okay? Me, I'm about 80%. Uh, and the 20%, I, I'll have salad, especially on the weekends. I, I love salad and, and things like that. So, hey, I hope this was good for you. I, <laughs> look, as I've told you in the another video, sometimes I have so much energy, I just ramble, and, and but that's good for me because I know that my body is loving what is happening to it. All right, so hey, again, um, if you subscribe to the channel, please let me know that you subscribe. I try to read all of um, the comments that are left. I may not be able to answer all of them because I'm getting so many now, it's really, really hard to keep up. But I am reading all of the comments and I thank you all so very much. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you, if you have plans to become a fruitarian, um, and that's just the name, if you plan to eat whole fruits and whole vegetables all the time. Hey, I'm excited for you because your life is about to change. And those of you who have just started doing it, I know you feel it. You can't tell me that you don't feel it. All right. Hey, you all take care. Hey, it was awesome to be able to connect back with everyone again. Of course, you all know I was in uh, Florida for a while and, and I'm back and I'm able to get back on the grind. So I appreciate it. Thank you all so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.